Greetings. This is Dr. Tillman. This is another lecture for History 104, 05, and 06. We're continuing Chapter 25, dealing with colonialism and imperialism. But this focus is now dealing with South Africa. In our previous lecture in colonialism and Central Africa, we realized that the motives of Belgium and European nations engaging in colonization of Africa it stands with the need for natural resources that they're exploiting in the land, uh, the use of religion as an excuse to conquer and control people and control their culture, and of course, the need to control people, land, and natural prestige of these nations. And we realize the impact that colonialism had on the continent of Africa. <clears throat> This lecture specifically focused on colonialism in South Africa. This is a picture of Cecil Rhodes. This is a picture of the De Beers Company Diamond Corporation, now the Diamond Family. This right here is a picture of the Ashanti Wars. Now we can now engage in what led to the colonization of South Africa. And we're also focused on Germany and Southwest Africa and the historical implications of that. First thing we have to understand is the role of eugenics. In our last previous lecture, we have talked about social Darwinism and this racial hierarchy that was created. This time we're dealing with eugenics, global medication, medical experimentation for sterilization of non-Europeans. If you look at the history of eugenics, this is part of social Darwinism as the ideology of, I would say, a depopulation. Uh, if you look at the United States, the United States have always had um, a very group of people who who are extremely wealthy. They consist of 5% of the U.S. population, but own 90% of the wealth. These are white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. These are the people who are on top of the racial caste system that they have created. And they feel like, you know, there are certain people who are not fit for society. You begin to see uh, standardized tests, lobotomies, sterilization, a lot of scientific experimentations that is dealing with excluding or quarantining a certain amount of people or pretty much sterilizing them to prevent them from reproduction. The eugenic program here in the United States, really led by the Birth Control League, and also include today is including Planned Parenthood, and many colleges and universities funded by Rockefeller corporations, Carnegie Crown corporations, and many people who are pretty much supporting and funding eugenics programs. Mostly with black people, African Americans, prostitutes, immigrants, people who were mentally challenged or disabled were the victimized of eugenics. Eugenics was actually formed by a science of science named Francis Galton. And again, eugenics would play out. It would be a compare how can, how can I say it complemented the ideology of social Darwinism because it acts it out. This right here is a map of South Africa during a time where it becomes under colonization. We begin to the Boers, the British, and of course the battles right here is the Anglo Boer War. You had Transvaal, led by Paul Kruger, Zululand, the Orange Free State, Cape Colony, Natal, and the Kalahari Desert. Now, what are the natural resources in South Africa? It's mostly diamonds and gold. Just like you said, cobalt and rubber that are natural resources in Central Africa. These two major are the major natural resources within South Africa. Now, to understand the colonization of South Africa, or what become the Union of South Africa and the apartheid, the segregation apartheid state, you have to go back into history. Who were the indigenous people there? It was mostly the Khoi Khoi, the Bantu, the Sosha, the San, the Zulu, and many others. Now, in 1652, you had the Dutch East Indian Company. Remember, you had the Dutch East Indian Company, which is a slave 
trading company. The Dutch began to settle onto South Africa during the, six, during the 1400s, 1600s. The ancestors, the offspring of the Dutch East Indian Company, would become known as the Boers or the Afrikaners. These are white Dutch people who speak Dutch. And they settled in the Cape Colony. And they were enslaved what is called the Khoi Khoi. So when you hear the term Afrikaner, and you know, understand some, these are folks who are Dutch. That's their ancestors, Dutch. During this time period, you begin to see the rise of the emergence of Shaka and the Zulu warriors, the Zulu and McAfee wars. And of course, these the, the Zulus were actually skilled soldiers, skilled warriors. There's a picture of the Shaka Zulu document, the, 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 the mini series that played years ago. You know, one of the great things about it is the the Kilwa sword you see right here that they used to in, in battle warfare. So what you see here is that Africans are not victims. They have been engaging in in battles for many years. And of course you have the Zulu McAfee Wars. Now you have the British in South Africa. It's actually gold and the diamond that is now attracting them. So in eighteen twenty you begin to see British imperialism in Cape Colony. Once the British come in, five thousand Afrikaners have to trek out of South Africa with their slaves. And they're tracking out. And it's known as the Great Track. Now, what are they coming for? The bears are coming for the gold and with Wasteran and the diamonds and Grokland West. This is now is now you really begin to see them create a lot of robberies. So there's nowhere for Africans, and there's nowhere for the Dutch, the Afrikaners, to go. They're tracking out of Cape Colony. They're going into, was some go into Natal, some go into Transvaal, some go into Mobutu. I mean, here is the map right here, because the British are coming in, and they're now imperializing the entire country to the point where they begin to, ex to annex Natal and the Sotho into the colonies. This will lead to the Anglo Boer War. This is where Cecil Rose comes in. Cecil Rose is a, is a British diamond tycoon. And of course, he served as the Prime Minister of Cape Colony. Now, he's really backed by the British. And he's robbed with Paul Fruger. Paul Fruger is the president of Transvaal. And the goal right here is to, you know, there has been ideas of this plot of the British coming in, imperializing the entire land, and unifying the entire southern portion of Africa, or South Africa itself, under British domination as part of the British colony. Now you begin to see the Anglo Boer War between 1899 and 1902. Now, part of this is called Labungula. You know, you know, he's the king of the the, the Debele people. And he's one of the major survivors of the Zulu Wars. And of course, he's working with me. And of course, he is someone who converted to Christianity, he's working with missionaries there. One of the problems that, again, Great Britain will do is the idea of annexing land. Then you begin to have what's called the Mantabele War. And the Mantabele War really really is called the British who is pushing, who is creating these wars to gain access to South Africa and all the land itself. So what you have is a missionary named Leander Jameson and Cecil Rhodes who began to swindle not only the Nabeli people but many ethnic groups in South Africa and to taking their land by having them signing over, signing over concessions. And what happened was they did not know what it was signing happened when they began to annex many of the land into the county of Great Britain. And this led to the Mentebelli War. And of course, they'll be one of being defeated. Now you have the unification of South Africa, Transvaal, the Orange Road Free State, Cape, Good Hold, Natal, and everything else. Then you have the era segregation. It's not called apartheid, not yet. But you begin to see the creation of the color band system where Afrikaners begin to have skilled positions. 
This was done pretty much because of the fact that the British, the Great British, allowed the Africans a seat into the British Parliament and let them rule over South Africa the way they see fit, only to get access to resources. Now the Africans is now associated with the British Empire. Now the Africans can wind up controlling South Africa. Then in 1913, you had the Native Land Act where land becomes consolidated by the white minority, and you begin to segregate black folks into sub substandard conditions. You be meaning this. This is the era of segregation. And with it me is there's racial inequality as well. Not only that, you have black folk who are mostly laborers and Africans or the Africaners are the ones who control the diamond and the gold mines. Now you have something called German South Africa and Germany. There's a connection here. Why? This right here is currently you could have what's called the genocide of the hero and the Nama in 1904 to 1907. This country is currently called, well, this country right here is currently called Namibia. And this was colonized by the German states. It wasn't called Germany then. And how did this come about? What makes this very important was this, is that you had pretty much Germany who wanted to colonize. Well, let's go back to this one as well. The hero and Anama nation ethnic groups were pretty much being colonized by the German states. The generals began to conduct an act of genocide by starving them out, starving the hero and Anama for many years. And what you begin to have here is um, what I call eugenics, actually. What they begin to have is they actually perform scientific experiments on children. This is Eugen Fischer, and Eugen Fischer was a German scientist. And what he did was the Rohoboat Bastards Project in 1908. This is after the entire genocide. And what's going on now is that he began to do scientific experimentations. He began to make racist ideas that uh, Africans are psychologically and luxury inferior, which is very false to whites. What he does is this, is that he influenced what's called Nazi eugenics, which what you saw in the concentration camps that happened in Nazi with uh, European Jews, uh, uh, mixed race Afro-Germans there, uh, gypsies, communists, gay people, etc. All the things you see going on there can be actually be traced here with the Rohoboat Bastards Project in German West South Africa. And Eugene Fisher, so you had these acts of atrocities going on within South Africa and also Southwest Africa. I'm coming upon two more minutes, and this is the last picture that I have here of some of the experimentation that Eugene Fisher had been conducting. And the final analysis, and I have only about uh, a minute and a half left. The final analysis of colonialism in Africa. People begin to ask these questions about why is Africa is in the state that it is in currently. I will say this: Africa is the richest continent in the world, where every country is dependent on, but the people itself were made poor due to the enslavement of Africans and colonizations. It also answers questions of the need of further neocolonization of Africa. It also understands that, you know, the conditions of Africans today can be traced to colonizations and the current need of colonization. Now, this is not to say that Africans were victims. In our next lecture, when we talk about Pan-Africanism and African liberation, we will go into different ways of how they tried to go about to further neocolonialism as well. Thank you for listening to the lecture. Good day.